Welcome. Today's video has been completely inspired by the guy that I uh, gave a shout out to last week, Martin Saban Smith, who is <coughs> really accomplished at scorching, pyrography and enhancing the already natural beauty in wood. And his colouring techniques are stunning. However, I, over the last couple of weeks I've been messing around and practicing with a blowtorch and uh, with a heat gun and with some dye and I'm very pleased with the results. Um, I must state at this particular point that um, the majority of the time I think wood is best left to its natural beauty. However, there are instances when enhancing the look of it can make the piece a little different, a little unique and very pleasing. Um, there is a bowl um, which I turned out of olive ash and you can see a very pronounced figure, the pattern is great, Mother Nature has really done a good job if you like. Now this was from an old tree, um, some 300 years old I believe and uh, in my opinion, turn it, finish it and leave it. Now from a different tree, some more white ash. Um, these are, uh, this is from one of the boards that uh, I did a video on last year when I had the, uh, the wet boards and I rough turned them. Um, <clears throat> still a nice piece and um, the figure on it is less pronounced but nevertheless it's there, it's very subtle and I think that sort of a piece also has its place. From the same board um, I produced that. Now that has been dyed and scorched. I'll go into the, the methods later on in the video. Um, a completely different look. Put them both together, virtually the same sort of a grain pattern but you can see a strikingly different appearance. So that is one of the um, advantages, if you like, in certain woods to have a go with a blowtorch. On this little plate, um, the back has been dyed only, uh, red back obviously and finished, and as I say, I'll go into the method later. And on that side, scorched only, no dye, just scorched. And uh, that too can have quite a dramatic effect on a piece. A natural edge bowl, again in ash, not completely finished yet, a uh, little crack there filled, but <coughs> looks rather good in its natural state. Another ash bowl that I actually coloured uh, with um, various different colours and, and uh, blend them in and finish the inside with black. So again, different effects. I'm not reinventing the wheel by any means, but I just thought I'd go through my process, an introduction into it, uh, and then half the pleasure is experimentation and finding what works for you. Um, I'd like to make a quick mention to a company called Eternal Tools. Again, I reiterate, they're not sponsoring me or anything. I don't cast your mind back to the last video and I have that nasty little line that I created stupidly in the middle of the fine wheel. It doesn't affect its operation at all but it really is annoying me. So Reed Grey came, came up trumps again, Robo Hippie, um, an aluminium oxide cleaning stick. So I searched uh, in the UK and Eternal Tools stopped them. A um, few little emails, few questions, very promptly answered and um, I spent, I think it was £15, including VAT and delivery. And that will be coming in the next few days and I'll be putting it to the test and I'll let you know what the results are, whether it cleans the wheel up or not. Um, and I'd also like to give a shout out to a guy called Bram Sharp. And uh, Bram's channel goes under the name of Bram's Shed. Bram hasn't been turning that long, I think he's got five, maybe six videos up at the moment. Um, it's coming on really well, great guy, corresponded with him a few times, he's a UK turner which is always a plus and uh, 
again I'll urge you to go across to Brown's channel and uh, subscribe and watch his videos and support him through his, his journey. So I'll put links down below for Eternal Tools and uh, because obviously they do a lot more than just cleaning sticks um, and I'll also put a link down to Brown's channel and another link to Martin's channel as well, Martin Saban Smith. Um, I'm going to start dabbling in colouring as well now and Martin's given me a few hints and tips on products to use and try out so um, we'll see how that goes on. Well without further ado I'll change the camera angle and uh, we'll see what I've been doing. Okay, what I've got here is um, an 8 inch um, ash bowl which I wet turned um, back last year. So what I'm going to do on this side I'm going to do my dyeing process, what I do with the dye and then I'll um, true up and finish the inside and then I'll do the scorching. Okay, so what I'm doing now I'm applying a coat of uh, Liberon palette dye and it's dark oak and just apply it quite liberally onto the wood and make sure that you really get it into the grain because at the end of the day when we sand it back it's the grain we want to highlight this will obviously darken the surrounding wood a bit as well, but um, you'll see the effect. Okay. So that's that. And there's the uh, the product. And as I say, I'm not endorsing this. Is essentially, it's just what I happen to have and what I'm using. Okay, now to speed the process up of drying, um, I use a heat gun and I've used that quite successfully. So I spin the, I'm spinning at about 400 revs, put the heat gun on and all this does is it's not burning the wood or anything, it's just aiding the drying of the dye. So when I've done that and it's dry, I'll come back. Now that's dry, um, it's taken about 10 minutes. Um, with the heat gun on its lower setting and the lathe revolving and that's brought the drying time down from um, they reckon between an hour and two hours um, properly to ten minutes which is all good. Okay so now I'm going to sand up I sanded the bare wood up to uh, 320 so I'm going to start with 240 and, and they start to remove the excess you can already already see um, the effect that is being created now what I do now and again I won't bore you with that I go over it by hand now and then I can give a bit more sanding to areas which have absorbed the dye a bit more um, until you're happy with the look that you've got. So again using the 240 and then what I will do at the very end is finish now off with 320. What I do is um, give it a couple of coats of um, sanding sealer mix. Now obviously the dye raises the grain that's why you sand it back. Um, now the sanding sealer will both seal the grain and it will of course need sanding back to denib it because it will raise the grain a bit itself. And rub that well in. Right, so I'll let that dry. Um, I'll apply another coat, I'll denib it, I'll apply two coats and <coughs> I'll come back when that's done. Okay, I've put the two coats of um, sanding sealer and denibbed. Now I'm going to put some wood wax 22 on. And I don't be too critical about the finished piece because it's not, um, this is for demonstration only and obviously the more time you spend on it because you do get different areas there, everything has been absorbed fairly um, evenly um, but other parts obviously have been
be more absorbent. And you do need to take the time to get a really perfect finish. Just giving the second coat a final buff. And there we go. So you can see the effect that you can get. Uh, it really does highlight the grain and um, I think it's good on certain woods. Okay, so that's the one process merely dyeing. Um, I'll turn the bowl around and we'll get on with the scorching. Okay, so now, now we come to the fun part. This is the inside of that little bowl and uh, what I'm going to be using is a small um, blowtorch with the detachable camping gas canisters. Now you must be very aware all the time where that flame is pointing. Um, I move everything out of the way, make sure I clear up, and you know me, any excuse to clear up, but get rid of all the shavings and the dust that you can and make sure that you know where your flame is pointing. Now the idea Again, you can see here, it's a very, uh, very pleasant um, grain pattern. The thing with ash is that because of the different um, densities of the wood, the, um, the grain quite often raises, naturally, if you like. Even after you've sanded, you'll have a, a, a bit of a texture there. So we light the blowtorch, and what I'm doing is I'm turning that um, a very low speed, speed at about 60, 60 odd um, RPM and play play the torch the flame onto the wood Okay, I think we'll call that done. Uh, with practice you get a more even flow, but again, like with absorbing liquid, like a sanding sealer or an oil, uh, the grain is going to have di different absorption on different parts of the bowl. But we'll let that cool right down now, and uh, then I'll go on to the next Okay, thing. so it's about time to um, cool down. And now comes the next stage of um, sanding. What I will do here is use the same grit 320. You don't need a lot of sanding, but you can do it as much or as little as you require to get the desired effect. And it's really just how much time you want to spend on it. I think you get the idea. Do. And now what I'll do is two coats of sanding sealer and denibbed, and then um, I'll use wood wax 22 on this occasion. But as I say, I found the Beal buffing system to be extremely um, effective. This is the first coat of sanding sealer, and I think it's probably a good idea to show you that because it gives you an idea of what the finished article is going to look like. It really does highlight the grain, which is the whole idea of doing it. Okay, just buffing up the last coat of wax now. And as you can see, the, uh, the ball has moved quite a bit because it's dried out a lot, but I don't mind that. I think that gives it character. And uh, if you want to um, and this bowl is rather thin as well, so as I say, it's a practice piece. Uh, 
and there we go, finished bowl. And uh, you know, the effect, hang on, turn the light off, and the, uh, I think the effect is, is quite good. And you can play around with it, uh, you can do as uh, an intense burning, or as little as you want. And uh, thank you Martin for the idea. And Martin did suggest um, that he actually tried it with a lathe turning and I think his RPM, the lowest RPM he can get is 500. Well I had it down to 60 odd and to be honest with you, um, even that's too fast because mine goes down to 50. But I think, you know, if you could get it round to about sort of doing that, which is about, I don't know, 10 RPM, that would be good. But um, my advice, but obviously play around with it yourself, is to do it by hand, because then you've got more control of the severity or lightness of burn you're putting um, on the wood. And also, um, Scotty from Woodchuckers mentioned using a heat gun. Well, the heat gun I showed you that I dried the um, the dye with, you could use that. And yes, it does work. It's very slow, but having said that, um, that even gives you more control over how much burn you achieve. So it's a case of finding your own level and, and deciding what you want to do. And this is obviously just, just scratching the surface of what is... Um, what is possible. Here's the finished bowl. The inside was sanded down to 320, um, then it was scorched uh, with a blowtorch uh, to, the, to the level of scorching you required. Once it had cooled down, sanded, uh, hand sanded to get it to the required pattern that you want and severity um, of the grain. <coughs> Once that was done, um, sanding sealer, two coats of sanding sealer mix, nibbed in between each one and two coats of wood wax 22 and as I said um, if you've got a buffing system of any sort that works very well as well and then on the back side um, this was dyed again sanded down to 320 um, one coat of dye uh, was applied and as I said I used the uh, Liberon uh, palette dye um, dark oak once that was dry, which you can speed up a bit with the use of um, either a hairdryer or a, a heat gun, lightly played on there to speed up the drying process of the dye. Once it's dry, again, you can either use the lathe uh, revolving, or have it on the lathe revolving uh, to get rid of the majority of it if you wish, and then again, I would suggest you rotate it by hand and attack the pieces you want to attack to get the desired effect you're looking for. Once that's all done, sand it back again, two coats of sanding sealer and two coats of wax or indeed go to the buff a buffing system if you have one, um, just as effective. Um, and that's it really. Um, the sky's the limit, you can, you, you can do what you like obviously, uh, add patterns, do, do, do whatever you wish. Have a look at Martin's um, channel and he will give you some ideas with the videos that he's done. So thanks again to Martin, thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye now.